Ohayou gozaimasu. Thank you, uh, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Line, for hosting this wonderful meeting, uh, the third meeting in a series which we hope to continue over many years. Today, the subject is data, data on the internet, and data being everywhere, and what we do about it as a society, and how we harness it to mutual effect, not only to grow business, but also to grow as a society of people. Let me start with a question that's also part of a joke. How much is your privacy worth? Facebook's market cap. Facebook, Google, and many other companies have made billions and billions of dollars accumulating data about people and monetizing it to their success. Those of you who were following the recent uh, scandal with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica may have seen the congressional testimony of Mark Zuckerberg. Um, this one piece of that testimony was very funny to a lot of people. The, the man on the on the left, or on, on the, uh, your left of the screen is a senator in the United States called Orrin Hatch, who's actually a very smart guy and has been around for a long time, asked Zuckerberg this question, how do you make money when you give a product away for free? And the look on Zuckerberg's face was, was somewhat surprised, but I think he realized it was a bit of a trick question, and he answered, Senator, we run ads. The question is, how do you make so much money as a business running ads uh, and be able to give your product, which is vast, away for free? Over the last year, since we had the first one of these meetings, a lot has happened. One of the issues related to the Facebook privacy scandal, which some have referred to as a data breach or a data leak, is that it was actually a deliberate act by Facebook and a fundamental part of the way they make money. The privacy scandal at Facebook caused their users and consumers around the world to realize that they're literally giving these services a window into their personal lives. GDPR, on the other hand, the European privacy law that will come into effect later this month, has taken a very strong position on behalf of European consumers on how their personal data is going to be used and monetized, not only by social networks, but by any company that collects or holds data, not only in Europe, but around the world. The fear of GDPR and data management is significant. There is a lot of commercial opportunities for people to monetize this opportunity at the same time, many businesses may suffer huge fines as a result of these laws, which will effectively protect consumers. More data is now available online than at any other time in history, and that data is not simply stored on the internet. This data is used by artificial intelligence algorithms that are showing tremendous potential in terms of giving companies and services insights into users and companies and commerce in ways that have never been seen before. The Internet of Things also promises that trillions of sensors will be found across the planet, all connected to the Internet, all reporting first-party data to more data platforms. And we're also seeing data breaches growing every single day. Yesterday, I was in a meeting uh, here with a major company, and we were discussing data breaches in Japan. There were several major data breaches in Japan over the last year, one by the government. So this is not a problem that's unique to Europe or the United States. It's found everywhere. On the internet, culturally, people used to think that data is a free-roaming fluid. Everything on the internet is open, everything should go everywhere, but we all know that this is not the case. Data is a window into our lives. We may want to trade it, we may want to share it, but this has to be done in a way that is trusted. Current data platforms, like Facebook, like Google, are built like big buckets at least from a trust management point of view. In business to consumer, 
They're built to support the platform's owner's business. Many inputs of data, no outputs. If you're Facebook or Google, you sell advertising. Other people have different models. In business to business and in the IoT space, there are industrial data platforms that are created often to serve the party that sells them interest, whether that's selling more databases, more CRM systems, more consulting, more jet engines, more wind turbines. These platforms are generally biased to the company that's selling them. None of these platforms are really designed for dynamic, multi-party, secure transaction flow, which if people think about it, is the essence of commerce, both in the physical world and the digital world. People, enterprises, and governments are starting to take cloud data processing very, very seriously. Modern data platforms, as we just discussed, store vast amounts of first and third party data. The way this data is analyzed is often beyond the data provider's intention. Most people who use Facebook were actually shocked and surprised that third parties could acquire their deeply personal information. In B2B, a lot of companies using data platforms today uh, don't understand that their competitive edge will be compromised by not using secure, trusted data platforms. And of course, in the consumer space, even though there was a lot of shock and surprise, the impact of what's happening, and continues to happen, by the way, because nothing has been done about this, um, will have long-term effects in society um, in terms of privacy violations and other tension in societal systems. Trusted data platforms, which are now emerging, persistently protect data wherever it goes. They govern or manage the data in accordance with the owner's and the user's wishes. Data, like physical goods in a value chain, often has different needs as it travels through a value chain from party to party. And a trusted data platform must be designed to manage the data contextually as it moves from party to party. All data and users have to be authenticated. You have to trust the device or the person who's giving you the data, at least to conform to the agreement that was made when the data was provided. We believe that these data must be managed at a very fine grain level. You can't think of data as being in a lake or a bucket. And oftentimes, just the same as in physical society, we need trusted third parties or trusted intermediaries to arbitrate between parties who are often competitors or may be competitors in certain situations and cooperants in other situations. Ultimately, these platforms, by virtue of their design, lower the risk of data breaches and provide accountability. Using such systems, data can be trusted. It can be fluid. It can flow in a commercial system while maintaining its value and not compromising its integrity. Every bit in a trusted data platform matters. And these are perfect for governance, multi-party transactions, and commerce. On May 25th this month, GDPR, the European Privacy Law, will go into effect. It's very simple at its root. One, don't track people without their explicit permission. Two, always take people's rights and freedom into account when processing data. And three, be accountable. This is simple common sense. People's mothers and fathers should have taught them when they were children. But it's amazing that it's not respected. GDPR will have deep ramifications for many industries, especially ad tech and especially social networking. Anyone tracking European citizens illicitly could face massive fines. Industries based on data analysis must adapt or die. And trusted data platforms are definitely a way forward to help industries adapt to the new law. 
In Japan, Jap the Japanese government has similar data protection laws, and we will see such laws coming out in the United States, China, India, and other key geographies. Trusted data platforms have great promise by making more data available to us. Consumer services that come out using trusted data platforms lower the risk that our data will be used to exploit us. Such platforms will drive rapid advances in medical research with more precise and effective treatments, saving lives and alleviating pain. They will help us optimize worldwide energy production and use. InterTrust deploys trusted data platforms in the renewable energy space today that do this. And ultimately, we will see them being used not only for consumer, not only for IoT, but even in things as analog as food production. Given the fact that the planet's needs are increasing exponentially, this will be a very important and a good thing for society. I hope you enjoy the day. We have some excellent speakers from many fine institutions. We're looking for an exciting dialogue. And we invite you to enjoy the hospitality of Lion and make the best out of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.